Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a tutorial for you for this checkerboard baby blanket. It turned out so cute. I absolutely love it. I can't believe out of all of my gingham blankets I've made, I've actually never done just a two color checkerboard blanket. So it saves you a little bit on um, weaving in the ends as you're just switching colors every eight rows. And um, I think you're going to really enjoy it. This is just a darling, darling look that's becoming really popular right now with the young moms. So a let's get started. A bit about the yarn that I used, of course, is one of my very favorites, Bernat Softy Baby Cotton. Uh, just makes such a beautiful, giftable blanket. Super washable, washes up great for babies. Uh, I just really enjoy working with this yarn. The colors, the color I used is Aqua Mist. You will need about three of e of the other one was clear white. Uh, three skeins of each color. This is how much I had left of the Aqua Mist and the white I used for the border, so it completely finished off the skein. So if you wanna make it a little bit bigger than this, you're gonna to wanna to get four skeins of each color, but this is a 34 by 34 inch baby blanket. I am using a G uh, five millimeter hook. I am going to work with a tan color as the white, because I know it's hard for you guys to see when I work with white yarn. So pretend this is white. And that is the color I started with for the blanket. And I started with 131 chains. So the pattern repeat is any odd number times 10 plus one. And the reason why you want an odd number is because we are going to be beginning and ending the blanket on the same color. So you want this to be an odd number. So we're doing the white. However, I'm going to be working with tan yarn so that you can see what I'm doing. The first row will be all single crochet. So work into the second chain from the hook with single crochet and work one single crochet into each chain. And just for this demonstration, I have chained 31 chains. So I'll be able to work you through three blocks of color change and show you how to carry yarn up the side. And then we will do the simple single crochet border together that I'm going to show you how I do a yarn under technique instead of yarn over to create the border and also I'm going to teach you the formula um, so that you can get the sides of the blanket the border to match up perfectly so that there's no ruffling or pulling I'm going to try and use your gauge to get a very nice Order. All right, so this will be our first row of griddle stitch. You will work one single crochet into the first stitch. And if I forgot to mention, you chain one and turn. Go ahead, chain one and turn. And then it's a double crochet into the next stitch. We alternate this pattern for a total of 10 stitches. So single and then double. Single. Double. On the 10th stitch, which should be a double crochet, just work yarn over, insert your hook and pull through two like that. And then place this, the white 
forward, in this case we're using tan, and place the new color over the hook and pull through. And that will complete the stitch. So you'll still have 10 stitches right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then we're going to leave this tail to the back, but now we crochet over the yarn not in use. So this will be white for you. Now continue the pattern. We always start the griddle stitch with a single crochet and then work a double crochet. And now let's work this griddle stitch for the next 10 stitches. This is our 10th stitch. So we will yarn over and just pull through two. And now to keep our yarn from twisting, we're gonna always keep the teal color, the aqua mist to the back of our work and your white, in this case the tan, to the front of our work. Or whatever two colors you're working with, choose one to be in the back, one to be in the front. And this will totally help you from having the yarn twist on you. Now, this time, if you notice, I kind of lightly pulled on that yarn before going through, and now we will crochet over the teal color, this, uh, sorry, aqua mist, starting with a single crochet and carrying the aqua color along the row. All right, the last stitch will be a double crochet always at the end of the row. If you've counted correctly, we're, it's our 30th stitch on the blanket. It will be 130 or whatever number you choose. So since we are not changing color, we're just pulling through still, chain one and turn but we are going to wrap this carried yarn around the end of the row. And you can see it's just normal to see a little bit of it poking through, but as you create the blanket, it really becomes not very noticeable. I'll show you in the original blanket. So now let's go back to beginning to working the griddle stitch, work single crochet, into the top of that last double crochet of the row. And I'm also er inserting my hook underneath the carried yarn there so that it can be carried along the row. So there's our single crochet. So I'm, I'm definitely carrying this along, working over it. And I do kind of gently, you know, give it a little tug here and there. I want to make sure it's laying nice and flat across the row. Wants to be really snug, but not too tight that it pulls. Keep everything nice and loose. But here's that carried yarn. Still pulling it around, pulling it along the row with me.
Okay, I'm getting ready here for my last stitch. So it is, I'm working into the top of that last single crochet there, just pulling through two, keeping the this color to the front, giving this maybe one more tight, tight little, a little tug, make sure it's laying flat across the row and then pull through. Now we're going to work the next 10 stitches of griddle stitch. And see I'm carrying this other color across the row. Last stitch, I'm going to keep the aqua color to the back. Give my tan just a little bit of a tug. Make sure it's laying flat through these stitches here and then pull through. Now I still will work over the aqua color. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this here. This is one of my most favorite stitches to use when I am making gingham or now these checkerboard blankets. It does tend to hide the yarn quite a bit the best. It just it looks more disguised even though you still can see it through the row. It's like you see just little bits of it. Okay, here I am at my last stitch, the row always ends with a double crochet, so you'll know you've got your counting off if you're not ending with a double crochet. And we're always chaining one and turning, and we're always carrying this yarn around the back of the work or around the side so that we'll have it for the next square. You'll, get, you'll see that you'll get into a little rhythm once you keep going across the row, and it's actually quite relaxing. And it is exciting to see this blanket grow. I don't know, I always have a hard time putting these type of blankets down because I wanna see what the next row will look like. Okay, I am going to finish off this block and I'm going to make this eight rows high. So it's 10, stitches wide and eight rows high. So I will meet you back after the eighth row and then we'll switch colors. Okay, so I have my eight rows of work, but technically nine, because if we did, we did start with that row of single crochet, but we're going to, that's gonna kind of become part of our border. So if you wanna measure and make sure that your little squares are definitely squares, they should be about two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And um, if you are finding that they are shorter than that, you might wanna loosen up your tension, try a different hook size. You, This is why I always recommend doing a little swatch so that you can um, make sure you've got your gauge correct. So there are 10 stitches and eight rows. Okay. So now at the end of this row, we get to switch color. And so instead of pulling through with the tan, we are gonna pull through with the aqua mist. Chain one and turn. And we begin again. The griddle stitch pattern, nothing has changed other than we have switched colors. So pull through. Um, Start the row with a single crochet 
and carry this yarn along. So um, that was one thing different with uh, the gingham blankets that I appreciated about this checkerboard is that I really never had any yarn to cut or anything. You're just using it, these two colors completely. And um, you only have to, you know, obviously when you run out of yarn, you'll have to join. But other than that, there's very few ends to weave in because we're just switching colors at the end of the row. So there's my double crochet, lead this to the back, the aqua to the back, pull through with the tan, and away you go. So I'm going to work another eight rows, and then um, I'll just do a quick tutorial for you of the border. And I'll show you the how to how we're going to get the correct number of stitches down the sides so that our border will look really straight and nice. Okay, so I decided to do three rows so that you can really just see the whole thing. This is what your blanket will look like when you're finished. You're going to also finish um, with 13 blocks of color. So three by three, 13 by 13, or whatever odd number you choose. Um, so when you're completely done, you can tie off with the turquoise color and be done with that and weave in your ends, which I'll do later after I'm done. So, but the first thing we're going to do is just pull through, chain one, and turn. And now I am going to make a row of single crochet that, you know, sort of matches the bottom down here. That'll be the first step to our border. So just work one single crochet into each stitch across the row. And when we get to the corner, we're going to do a corner stitch, which will be single crochet, chain two, single crochet. All right, so I just worked single crochet in the, here I am working it into the last stitch there. And now let's work two chains and then single crochet into the same space that you just did, but we're turning and working the corner. Okay, so earlier I talked about our gauge, which was eight or 10 stitches across in eight rows. So what we learned from that is that if we're going to be able to keep our single crochet stitching even and not have gaps or anything, we need to work 10 single crochets per eight rows. So we're 10 stitches wide, eight rows high. So we want to make sure these 10 stitches get worked into the side. So you'll just work the 10 single crochets as evenly as possible down this side. Okay, so I've got 10 single crochets worked for this block. Okay, and then that's what you'll do. Continue, just get 10 stitches here, 10 stitches there. And when we get to the corner here, we'll do that single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and I'll show you what I did a little bit different, uh, how, where to work the stitches on the bottom. All right, so I just worked the single crochet, chain two, single crochet for the corner. So now I will just work the bottom of this chain and I like to work where I am grabbing the underside of it like that. So I'm kind of working at the bottom of each stitch And that's all you have to do for the bottom over here. So 
So continue across the bottom, work the single crochet, chain two single crochet, get 10 single crochets per eight rows, and then we'll work a corner stitch right here and I'll show you, we'll start another round of single crochet. All right, so what I did is just work one more round of single crochet. Sorry, I'm getting this last corner here. But instead of doing just a regular single crochet where your the yarn is over the hook, I yarned under. And what it does is it makes the little single crochet look more like an X. So, or hook over like that. So usually you're yarning over, this time we're moving the hook. So put it over the yarn like that. And you'll see that it makes your single crochet look more like cross stitch and have a little X on it. So it's really cute. And that's it, that's all I did. So when you get to the chain two spaces, that's where you'll work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet around that space. Other than that, work in every single single crochet and then join with a slip stitch and tie off and then you're done. So I kept it very, very simple. Um, of course, we have lots of other border options on our website if you wanna do something more than that, but maybe you can get a little glimpse closer of the little X's down here. So I thought it looked really cute. Um, and I just wanted to keep this blanket super, super simple. I got a, um, I also found this really cute book that I'm going to be including with my gift that I wanted to um, show you called Sleepy Sheepy. And I thought the colors worked so well. I always, I love gifting a picture book for my baby shower gifts. So anyway, uh, good luck on making your blanket. I hope it turns out so well. And I'm excited to do this in a couple colors. And actually this is, this really turned out really pretty too. This kind of has those beachy tones in it. But um, I have some more ideas with, and I'm gonna work some different stitches coming up with checkerboard idea too. So anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. Come show us in the Daisy Farm Crafter group on Facebook. If you make a checkerboard blanket, I'd love to see what colors you choose. All right, have a wonderful day.